I remember a time when sports nerds and RPG nerds were at odds. There are a lot of fans of RPGs who wouldn't dare waste their time playing sports games and vice versa. These days the gap between these two isn't nearly as wide but there still is a contingent for both groups. In reality, these two genres actually work quite well together. In this video, I'll be taking a look at some of the best examples of RPG elements used in sports games over the years, as we look for common ground between two of the biggest genres in all of gaming. Let's kick things off at the turn of the millennium with a Dreamcast game that stretched into a series lasting far longer than the ill-fated console itself. The World Circuit mode in Virtua Tennis tasks you with selecting a real-world tennis star and taking them through a, well, circuit of the world. The game gives you a ton of fun mini-games and tennis matches to play through to earn money to spend in the shop, where you can buy unlockable characters, new outfits, tennis courts, and recovery items. As you complete each match and or minigame, the event will level up and be more challenging the next time through. It's pretty basic and there isn't much RPG here, but Sega would improve with the next game, Sega Sports Tennis 2K2. This time around, you create a male and female player and go through a calendar of events. Depending on your level, different events will be available to you. You level up your individual skills and you can buy equipment that has different effects on your performance. You expend stamina when training or playing events and when the stamina is too low, you gotta head home and rest. As you progress, your rank in the tennis world increases. You do this until you're basically number one. The load times in this mode can be pretty long, but other than that, there's a ton of stuff to keep you busy here, and the game is incredibly fun to play, which definitely helps out a bit. Virtua Tennis 3 on the Xbox 360 is a more polished version of all of this. You still play the mini games, you still level up, you still play in tournaments, you pay for partners, you buy clothing, and all that good stuff, but now it's just a lot more polished. I highly recommend taking a look at this series even if you're not into tennis, as it's a lot of fun to play. Road to the Show is one of the most prominent modes in all of modern sports gaming, and for good reason. It's an addictive career mode that allows you to play out an entire baseball career, whether that be a perennial MVP or a minor league lifer. Road to the Show might be a household name these days, but the mode got its start with MLB The Show 06. As you would probably imagine, this is a pretty bare bones version of what we have today. There's a triple A stage to work your way through as you gain more points to train your player and boost their attributes. You can sim to your next at bat, which speeds along your progress, but if you want to play any defense, you have to play out every pitch until your player gets a shot to make a play. Your coaches and teammates will give you generic feedback based on your performance, but the big spotlight for this mode is the feature that allows your player to have a voice. Not happy where you are in the organization? You can complain to the powers that be, and if you're good enough, you might get your way. But be careful, because if you aren't lighting up the baseball world, you may just get cut outright. You can also talk to the press, among other things, and you'll have to balance how you perceive to the rest of the team. While this might not be worth going back to these days, Career Mode and MLB The Show 06 was the first step in what would become one of the best single player modes in all of sports gaming. The next pitch. And he watches one split the middle here, one and one. And there's a reason this team is losing already. He's got to stay out of the middle with those. The introduction of career mode to the NCAA football series, branded Race for the Heisman, was supported by putting Heisman Trophy winner Desmond Howard on the cover. In Race to the Heisman, players would create a new college athlete and take them from freshman year to graduation in an attempt to win the most prestigious award in all of college football, the Heisman Trophy. After you choose your position, you'll play through a practice style workout to test your aptitude. Depending on how well you do, you'll receive scholarship offers to play for certain schools. If none of those schools are worthy of your greatness, you can opt to walk on to any school in the game. 
During the season, you can run practice drills to get better, and your dorm room will change from a top ramen contamination site to a full-blown booster penthouse suite. And, as is custom, with success comes a new girlfriend. Yeah. And if you do happen to win the Heisman, you'll get this short but impressive for the time presentation cutscene. Like most of these early career modes, it's missing some quality of life features like being able to sim to only your parts, and there isn't much to the mode other than playing games, but I had to mention it because it's so beloved and for what you can do with your Heisman winner once they graduate. Which brings us to... Madden 06 was the first year of EA's exclusive license with the NFL, and while it was a major bummer losing the NFL 2K series, things weren't quite as dire back then as they would come to be in regards to EA's stranglehold on the NFL license. You see, the creative direction for Madden back in the mid-2000s was actually quite good. This team implemented owner mode in Madden 04, created one of the funnest football games ever with Madden 05 and the hit stick, and for Madden 06, EA Tiburon introduced Superstar Mode, and this is filled to the brim with stuff to do. You start by either importing your Race for the Heisman player from NCAA 06, or by creating a new player. If you go the new creation route, the game has this really clever parental gene mashing feature that randomly generates a mother and a father for you, and everything from their occupations to their IQ affects the type of player you get. This would actually be a really cool speedrun or challenge idea for those brave enough to accept the first set of parental units the game spits out. Whichever route you choose, once you have your player, you go through a gauntlet of events in order to get your player onto a team. Former NFL superstar Terrell Davis is your mentor, and I guess he's really lonely because he texts you non-stop. Then he starts calling you. A lot. Listen up. Now that you've been drafted, you've gotten a big day over with, it's time to move on. And of course, you being the big star that you are, let every one of those calls go to voicemail. Seriously, having to listen to these one after another makes me feel like I'm back in high school. And the girl who's got a crush on me starts calling me the moment I get home, even though we just saw each other all damn day. Terrell, I don't need to hear you roast me about being third string on the bills, brother. You'll have to hire an agent, and surprisingly, there are more than just a handful to look at. All these agent pictures are actually the developers of the game, all holding a cell phone looking like they're about to jump out of the Tiburon office windows. You'll also have interviews with some pretty specific preset answers. Before you can enter the draft, you have to take an IQ test. This is meant to mimic the infamous Wonderlick test, which gauges a player's cognitive abilities. Basically, they're just trying to make sure you don't show up to practice with a tennis racket or something like that. Once all that is done, you'll find out which team you've been selected to, and the real career begins. You'll have training camp to play through before you can get to the regular season, but at this point, you'll be able to check out opportunities presented by your agent for sponsorship deals, go to the barber, tattoo parlor, change your look, complain about your team or your spot, make bold statements like guaranteeing your next win, try out for acting roles, and more. And this is all within the first hour of the mode. You also have your very own webmaster named Dexter to draw art for you whenever you reach a career milestone, and of course, to ban the trolls. All right, ban anybody talking about OJ or barbecue from this point on, please. To say superstar mode is impressive is an understatement. And while it's not perfect, it's a pretty fun mode to play through. There's not really much in the way of stat building, but the actual role playing that you can do in this mode puts this one pretty high up there. It was a magical time when EA did more than make digital cards for players to buy. I guess there's an argument about whether racing is a sport, but that's for y'all to argue over. I'm just going to count it here because Forza Horizon rules and its RPG elements are crazy. Microsoft's car PG is not only, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I had to do it. It's not only incredibly easy and fun to pick up and play, but it hands out XP like sliced bread at a barbecue joint. You get XP for taking your car off jumps, playing chicken with the AI motorists, drifting around, well, anything, speeding, trading paint, racing clean, smashing boards, 
and more. They'll play special skill songs that double your XP gain during these cuts. And once your car earns enough XP to earn points, you can spend those points on perks that make that individual car earn XP at faster rates. But not only do you earn XP for the car you're driving, your character also earns a separate XP for winning races and completing events. Whenever you boost that level, you spin a wheel where you can earn different types of loot. This is akin to loot boxes, but honestly, you get enough spins that you're constantly getting money and new cars. A big part of roleplaying is making your character look as cool as possible. Horizon has that handled too. You can earn clothing and emotes for your character, and that's all well and good, but the real customization happens with the cars. Paint colors, paint types, graphics, logos, and more all at your disposal to make your car as great or as weird as possible. There's even an option to download community creations if you don't want to do it all yourself. And if you're bold enough to spend your time making these creations yourself, you can actually earn rewards for people downloading your stuff. One of the most enjoyable things about an RPG is the good feeling you get when you earn XP or level up, and Forza Horizon is that times a million. The final entry in the NCAA football series shone very bright before it burned out, leaving us with one AAA football game to choose from. Dynasty Mode had been in the game since NCAA Football 98, but 14 gave it a complete overhaul which led to some of the most satisfying RPG elements ever. If you want, you can start as the head coach of the best school in the nation and basically just win national title after national title. But the real fun is starting from the basement, besting and outlasting your colleagues to make it to the top. Starting as an offensive or defensive coordinator at a one-star prestige school means you'll be running with a team whose highest overall player is maybe a 76, and he'd be the outlier. The game gives you statistical goals to achieve that pertain to your side of the ball, and it rewards you with XP. Once you level up, you can unlock a new perk or perk tier from the skill tree menu. Early on, this tree will focus more on on-the-field attribute boosts, but there's also a skill tree for recruiting, which is a huge part of what makes this mode so enjoyable. Recruiting is the lifeblood of any college football program, and NCAA 14 hits the nail on the head here. First off, you'll have hundreds of players to scout and evaluate, but only 35 can be added to your recruiting board at one time. So figuring out which of the potential recruits are actually interested in your school is the first step. Next, the recruits are ranked out of 5 stars, although that doesn't necessarily mean the highest ranked recruits will actually be the most talented. As there are gems who are actually more talented than their rank, and busts who are less talented than their rank. Once you get your 35 targeted recruits together, you pour points into each recruit with a max of 500 at one time and their total points tell you where you stand among the other schools that they're interested in. You can improve your chances by scheduling them for school visits during home games, and there are bonuses within that if you schedule them with another recruit that has a complementary position, like a QB with an O-lineman. But don't you dare schedule another QB recruit at the same time or you'll be docked some points. Seriously, this system is so dynamic. I really wish more traditional RPGs would try doing a recruitment system like this to build your party. At the end of each season, you'll take a ride on the coaching carousel, a simple feature that creates a ton of excitement and intrigue. The carousel will start with a coach that's leaving a school or being fired. The system then shows the coaches from other schools who are candidates to possibly fill this vacancy. For example, if LSU fires Les Miles, then hires the head coach of Akron, Akron then needs to fill their head coaching position. Akron promotes their defensive coordinator, but now they have a new need for defensive coordinator. It's a domino effect that makes things feel alive. This loop of working your way from coordinator to head coach of a top school or head coach of the school you started with and turned into a national powerhouse is so fun and addictive. 
when I think of great game design, NCAA Football 14 comes to mind instantly. I only wish we could have seen what they were going to do with the next entry in the series as they had made even grander plans to make the mode feel alive, including referencing Dungeons and Dragons like procedural events that would take place during each season. We need this kind of innovation in sports games today. He's tackled at about the three yard line. I've saved the best for last because MLB Power Pro's 2008's MLB Life Mode is the best career mode that I've ever played in any sports game ever. You can create your own player, run through spring training, battle your way through AAA, and aim to get your number retired by the end of your career. That's all pretty standard, but the mode allows you to purchase items like medicine, game equipment, training equipment, books to boost your skill, things like golf clubs and fishing poles to enjoy your hobbies, computers and computer software, TVs, video game systems and software, and even your own private jet for a cool 50 mil. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. All these items have some sort of purpose that goes into making your player better. But it's not just your player that you can focus on. You also have the ability to have relationships with the team managers, coaches, your agent, teammates, and you can even date in the game. And yep, there's an engagement ring item you can buy to seal the deal when the time comes. All this is presented in perhaps my favorite menu system of all time. The colors are so vibrant, there are a lot of icons to quickly tell me information without having to have a bunch of text on the screen, and the art direction is brilliant. Power Pros is in no way the most sim simulation ever simmed, but it's still a fun game of baseball to play. And this whole mode has a primer mode. That's right, there's a mode that feeds into this mode called success mode, which is extremely difficult if you don't know exactly how to play it, but it does provide a lot of story elements, side quests, and a lot of what you'll find in MLB Life mode. If you can make it through success mode, you can move it right into MLB Life. There's a lot more to this spectacular mode, but I'll let you check it out for yourselves. MLB Life and Power Pros 2008 is about as RPG as you can get for a sports title. And there's our list of RPG elements in sports games. As you can see, they go quite well together. Building your players, building your teams, it all just kind of makes sense. I only hope that we can get a little more innovation with these features in the near future and not just the same RPG elements over and over again in all of these sports games. Well, that's going to do it for this video, folks. Do you have any good examples of RPG elements in sports games? I'll probably make another list like this because there are so many games that feature RPG elements. And I didn't want to make this video run forever, so I wanted to limit it down to just these ones right here. But I'm interested to see what some of your favorites are. Don't forget to rate the video and share it with friends if you know somebody who's into this kind of stuff. Until next time, this is Lex, signing off.